All right, Entree Architect community, it's 4 p.m. Eastern, which means it's time for the Entree Architect Context and Clarity Live session for Thursday. It's Thursday, right? March 25th, 2021. Thank you for joining us. Um, if you're listening to this as a podcast on the recorded version, welcome to the podcast. This is a live stream. It's a simulcast that we uh, do every Thursday afternoon. Catherine McPhail is my co-host. Hi, Catherine. Hi, Jeff. And every Thursday afternoon, we're joined by a special guest. We'll get to that in just a minute. But the reason that we come here every day, every Thursday, is so that we can find clarity around the things that matter most to you. Normally, I say most to you, the architect, because that is... Um, our general audience most days of the week, but we know we're simulcast right now. We're live inside the Entree Architect Community Facebook group, also on LinkedIn, also on YouTube, and also on Twitch. So we may have an audience of all different kinds of people. So the topics that we cover, one topic every day, one topic every week on this live version, are the need to know topics for whatever it is that you do. They usually fall under the broad umbrella of the business that you're in. And our real goal here is to find clarity around the things that matter most to you. And so that is what we will attempt to do today in our conversation. As you come in, please say hi. Let us know that you're here and let us know where you're joining the conversation from. I'm going to drop something in the comments section here real quick. You know, it's kind of nice to see that some people actually did register their names. And so we see who who is who is actually, oh, there we go, Jeff. We go. I, was, I was, um, yeah, so I can see who's commenting from Facebook and I don't need to be, have it open there and here. It's nice to know. Exactly right. If, if you want, uh, remember the Facebook rules, because it's a private group, the Entree Architect Community Facebook group is a private group. So the Facebook privacy settings will not let us pull your user information out. So that's why you show up as Facebook user on the screen, perhaps. If you would like, you can allow Restream to uh, see your name by clicking on the link that I just posted there in the chat. It's under Restream. It's chat.restream.io slash Facebook. Just click on that. It'll take you through a short little process and uh, we will be able to see who you are. Um, so tell us, who you are. Tell us where you are and thank you for joining us today. Catherine, I'm looking forward to this conversation today. Yeah, so am I. Yeah, it's, it's been, been a fun week. It has been a fun week. We've had a great week of conversations basically revolving around this idea of bringing humanity to a technology-driven world. And many of you have heard me say this before that the special guest that we have every Thursday afternoon really informs the topic, the, the theme that we will have for the week. And so we started out this week talking about humanity in terms of the workplace of the future. Basically, how do we take 2019 connectivity, human connections, human collaboration, and bring that into the firm of the future in a remote or a hybrid workplace setting? On Tuesday, we put a different spin on it. We talked about business development. Hey, what happens when you're busy and when you're overwhelmed by the inquiries that are coming on or coming in? How do you balance that human touch with the technologies that are available to you, the, the autoresponders, the email templates, et cetera? Because every single one of your clients is looking for the architect that's the right fit. They don't want to buy architecture from Amazon.com. So how do you balance the human and the technical? <laughs> Jeff, do you think Amazon is ever going to sell architecture? That just made my heart kind of stop. Maybe that's next. Well, Maybe I don't know that they'll sell now. architecture. And now that I've said it that way, they'll probably never sponsor the show. <laughs> so there's that. <laughs> no, you. Oh, well. That might have been a, oh, might have been a missed heard. opportunity. But, <laughs> and then uh, yesterday we talked about, uh, I, I call it yesterday, uh, presentation technology. I think I missed the mark a little bit there. Maybe um, interface with your clients, but you have BIM, you have VR, you have VA, you've got Zoom and Slack and other. How can we, how do we use those tools in such a way that we can bring humanity, that we can help our, our clients understand us, understand our work, understand their projects better? So that's that's where we've been this week. 
And then I think it's time to see where we go from here. So as everyone comes in again, say hi, let us know that you're here. Let us know where you're joining the conversation from. And let me introduce our guest to you. Our guest today is an author and he's a co-founder. He's a coach to coaches and he's truly a visionary. One of my favorite quotes that I found about him as I was researching called him the father of the human to human movement. Now, a word of warning. You need to be really careful that you don't read that too quickly because you might get you might really get the wrong idea, but I'll let you dig into that further. He's an engaging speaker and one seemingly small but unprecedented moment on his TED stage permanently changed the conversation about sales marketing and company culture. The book that started it all for him was There Is No B2B or B2C. It's human to human, H to H. His second book that was supposed to be his first book was Shareology, How Sharing is Powering the Human Economy. Brian Kramer, where's the button? There he is. Brian Kramer, welcome to Context and Clarity Live. Wow, what a nice intro. And thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm looking at all these wonderful comments and people from around the world and Wait to talk and join conversation and join the community. So, so much. Well, thank you for being here. We've been anticipating this. Obviously, we build this up right over the first part of the week to the point of Thursday and having our guest speaker and having you here in the conversation. And, um, you know, I think maybe the place to start, which again, you know, the majority of our audience, it's, at least I'm going to assume at this point, the majority of our audience is probably architects. That's that's the that's the core here because we most of the time we're in the entree architect community. So maybe the place to start is by asking um, or, or or touching on an idea that you've shared a lot in the different podcasts that we've listened to, and in, in uh, especially in shareology as well. Uh, you've described that human brands and human driven companies really have three facets. Um, they're simple, they're empathetic, and they're imperfect. And I want to dig into that more, but why don't we start maybe framing this conversation with how do we balance that simple, empathetic, and uh, imperfect in a world that these architects are, you know, all of these architects are in a world that's driven by expertise and professionalism. So how do you balance that human, the simple, empathetic, and and imperfect with, hey, I've got to be the expert. I've got to be the professional. Yeah. What do you think? What's the best way to balance that? Great. And with your permission, we can make some uh, audience engagement out of this. This Absolutely. You you just asked my favorite question in the world. Um, (laughs) So, um, and and so if we get people to answer the questions that I'm about to ask, um, uh, the then, then you guys can, can do like, uh, maybe the first person to answer everyone on the screen here, uh, will get a human coin. So it's, uh, there is, I have my own cryptocurrency, it's actual currency and, and whoever answers that question first can get, uh, get a human coin oh, and, and you I will I don't get to play though. What is that stinks? I love games like this. Well, well, oh, you, uh, I won't. I won't play because that would be unfair. Okay. You, we'll we'll get you both some hip just for hosting me. You guys both will get some just out of out of. Uh, okay. uh, uh, so so don't worry. Um, <laughs> and and so what we're going to do is we're going to get um, any. You guys can spot it hopefully, and and just just tell me who you see is answering the first one, and and um, and we'll we'll go from there. Uh, okay. Right. Plan is, yeah, I'm gonna write yes. the question. See, we already make- have Christian is jumping in uh, way ahead of time. He's already in on this. Yeah. Don't um, worry. I'm going to make it fair. Don't worry. We'll make it fair. All right. Yeah. So here we go. Uh, first, before I ask you the questions, I'm just going to build this up a little bit because that's that's just how I like doing these things. So um, be, I got to answer your question. Why simplicity, empathy, and imperfection? Um, the, the, the reason that, um, that I stated that in both shareology and in human to human in both books and what I said, uh, in, in my Ted talk is, is in response to why there's no B2B or B2C it's human to human is because, 
um, because when we look at businesses and, and this applies to people, um, all of, all of, uh, when you even just look at businesses, um, uh, in, uh, in any business out there, you think about a business and you think about the businesses that you really relate to, uh, pick any business and, and why you relate to them and why does a business actually, um, become something that you'd never leave. You, you are wholeheartedly, um, gravitating towards them. They, they speak to you. You're, 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 you're almost an ambassador to them without even being asked to be. And, um, and, and everything that they do is, is, is so meaningful or it, it really, it really, um, uh, makes you want to shout them from the rooftops. And now those are rare. Those are unicorns. Um, they're really not. And sometimes they go in and out of our lives. They do something and all of a sudden, poof, they're gone because we're fickle humans we are fickle now more than ever as 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 buyers of of companies as humans we are the we are a choose your own adventure game now more than ever um i will i will you will we all will uh pick a better price a better product a better a better um anything out there and so now what i believe is that we have to actually dig into being more human because that's what we're um that's what we gravitate more is, is we buy from people. We don't buy from companies as much anymore. And to do that, we have to identify what makes us more human. And that is simplicity, empathy, and imperfection to answer the, why is it that those three words matter? So now here comes the questions. Okay. Um, so, um, the, the first question is, um, and, and we'll, we'll, we'll finish this out with a, why does this work this way? But the first question is, um, think of a company that embraces simplicity. Now, the first person to jump in and tell us a company that embraces simplicity wins five human coin. That is cryptocurrency. I, answer, I, know. I just listened to a podcast where you were asking the same. I have the answer, but I won't give it. Apple. Uh, now, you guys can jump in if you want because somebody answered. And, and go ahead. You guys all uh, in the chat, everybody can answer. I, I'll take as many answers as you want. But the first person here to jump in actually gets uh, will get some, some crypto. Um, mm -hmm. So that's Kurt who gets the first piece of crypto. Is All right, so you get some human coin, and um, and the way uh, I'll we can we can uh, we can delegate the human coin however you guys want to do that. I can give you my email address or um, um, tweet it or however you want to do that. But the, the way what? <laughs> What's that? Nothing. There's someone said Chick Fil A. Chick Fil A. So we got, yeah, we've got Apple. We've got Patagonia. Yes, we have Warby Parker. Warby Parker. Let's jump in on this. Let's yeah. jump in on this and let's talk about that. Um, the first, the first answer was Apple, and that's a great response, and that's a that's a very standard. I would expect that response because we can count on two hands uh, all the products. I would imagine all of us in this room, and this room, I mean, in this chat, in this this community, um, what Apple has as its product is very simple. We know what they offer. When we walk into an Apple store, most time, most of the time, don't we know what we're, we're, we're going to purchase when we walk in? Look at that. Oh, my God. Wow. That's that, a that, that's, I got that from the museum. My goodness. Wow. Hang I on to that. from the Smithsonian. Um, wow. Well, that's now, you know, we're live, right? So, <laughs> um, so we, when we look at the simplicity of what we do and how we offer what we offer, and how it um, comes across, uh, that that really um, makes a connection with another human being. And the more complex we make it, and we do, we tend to make things more complex. We 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 screw things up as humans, not technology. We screw it up, and we make it more complex, and we do that internally. So the second one, here we go again, uh, is empathy. Now, listen to my question. What company embraces empathy? Here answer, we go. Answer in the comments. What company embraces empathy? Is that a hard one to spell? Lemonade stand. <laughs> That's the first answer, I think. Enron? Hmm. Uh, I don't think they did. We're looking for a, a winning answer. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's not it. REI? Empathy, empathy. Hmm. 
I, I think Consumer Cellular, Southwest Airlines. Okay. So I'll, let you, I'll let you guys um, uh, moderate uh, who, where you where you're at on the the first yeah. answer that that uh, settles settles with you. Well, yeah. apparently there's a delay on LinkedIn. So, blue, great blue hair and architects. I think that's it, Jay. That must be it. <laughs> I, the the first one that landed with me. Uh, and this is a little bit biased because I have a podcast called Build Your Brand, and I featured Southwest Airlines in the first season of Build Your Brand. So yeah. that was the first one that popped up that landed with me. Okay, let's do that. Uh, so uh, I, forgive me if I read this wrong. Jing Johnson is the winner. Then would be the winner then of that uh, human coin, and so we'll we'll get that to you. And um, and I love that embracing empathy, and I would agree with that. Um, embracing empathy is um, a, a, a great example. Southwest uh, takes care of their customer, and they do it openly. Um, they've done that in a in a great great way. Of um, you've seen it in how they don't nickel and dime you. They take care of their customer in ways that um, is is being their tran They call it their trans transparency. Uh, Yep. Um, transparency, uh, because, because, uh, because airlines are known for these little fees that exist all over the place. Mm -hmm. And so there's an empathy in that, in understanding that the, the customer doesn't know what's going on. So why don't we be transparent about that? And they, they, they did really did a good job. Another one might be, um, uh, um, uh, Amazon, uh, Amazon will return anything. I mean, that is empathy. Um, right. Now, they're big. They are massive. They're complex. So I wouldn't put put them under simplicity. But would I put them under? Uh, yes. So here's the third one. The third one is, ready? And this time, put the word next to it, imperfection. Now, there's no such thing as perfection. So put imperfection next to the word so we know what you're doing. And who embraces imperfection? So what, is, what does that mean? Who embraces imperfection? Well, who embraces imperfection is um, uh, uh, something might have um, uh, uh, gone wrong, and they corrected it. Yeah. Uh, there's okay. a challenge, and they're or they are not. Uh, there, uh, you know, uh, a lot of things have gone wrong in the NFL. Did they correct it or did they embrace it? Um, uh, they're also. Um, a lot of things in uh, a brand where you just want to hug them because they just are embracing who they are and they acknowledge it. Um, you love them for who they are. They are like the Gaylord Fockers of, uh, of, of, of a brand and you love them. Um, you know, I think Christian misfit veggies. I mean, they actually do literally embrace imper imperfection. It's not in the way you're talking about, but you know, misfit veggies. Do you know that company? I don't, I don't. I don't well, they, either. they take all of the vegetables that aren't <laughs> suitable. They're ugly. You know, they're not, um, they're imperfect. And then they sell them for a discounted rate box style all over the country. So they do actually embrace imperfection, but in a totally different way than you're talking about, in a literal way. Is that who you want to go with then? And no, I'm just saying that? that is good. That's not what you're talking about, but yeah. That's, uh, an honorable yeah. Mention. That's an honorable mention. I don't know. I'm going to leave it up to Jeff. I'm just, I'm just a lady dealing with this. All right. You guys give me the moderation of where we're going and then we'll, um, we'll move on. Well, let's see. So we had, Facebook. We had I don't know about that. There was one, sorry, I'm scrolling backwards now. So we had misfit veggie, misfit veggies, mm -hmm. which has to win the award for one of the hardest things to say. Um, <laughs> and then we had, uh, Zappos, um, Wabi Sabi that I'm not familiar with either. Nordstrom's, which mm -hmm. I think kind of. Uh, so this week, you know, you know, someone who's made a mistake and then just comes out and said, we made a mistake and we are sorry. Do they have to say they're sorry as part of their embracing? <clears throat> embracing imperfection is, is not trying to be overly perfect. Mm. Mm. It doesn't have to be saying there, that you're sorry. It, it it can it's it's not trying to be something that you're not. Um, uh, Dove is a great uh, brand for imperfection. Mm -hmm. uh, they are looking at humans as as we are all imperfect, and uh, we all have different different types of skin. 
Um, their, their commercials are wonderful, um, oh. showing that we are all different and we're all imperfect in our own way. I thought um, you meant the chocolate. I was confused there for a second. You mean the soap. Yeah. It, it was soap, um, yeah. comfortable in your own skin, right? Comfortable in your own skin. Yeah. yeah. So there's a lot of different variations of imperfect. It's how we show up. Well, why, I mean, why don't we, why don't we pick misfit veggies? There we go. So I think that was Christian, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And so, um, so, uh, Christian, um, please, uh, reach out through, um, uh, through them here and we'll, we'll make sure you get your human coin. Um, and so, uh, now when you put all three together, uh, simplicity, empathy, and imperfection, this is not, I'm not going to give away a human coin here because this is putting you all on the spot. I'm not going to do that to you, but when you put all three together, it's very hard to come up with a brand that has all three. Um, it's tough enough to have one. It's very tough to have two. It's very hard to have all three. Um, and so what we're going to strive for, and you guys all have a leg up, um, as a smaller business, as architects, when you look at your brands and you go home and you, and you, apply, or you probably are home when you, when you're at home and you're, you're putting your, your uh, pen to paper and you're thinking about how can I show up tomorrow and be the best human brand? Uh, look at these three words and do that. Um, uh, show up with that in mind, as opposed to how can I crank out better marketing? Um, put human brands to put this human uh, ide ideology together and then put marketing together on top of that. I, I think that I, obviously we've been thinking about this a lot this week, having the theme going all week, but I, I think to me, that's the perfect point. Again, back to this idea and I share this a lot, you know, some, some are probably tired of hearing this, but when I work with architecture firms, um, almost every time, you know, th they're surprised that someone made a decision. They hired this firm because they felt like a better fit, right? And then somebody says, well, we've done more schools in the state than anybody else. Or we've, you know, we've, we're tacking on our credentials, right? And, and um, you know, pinning up all of our banners. But those clients that say, we're looking for the architect that feels like the right yeah. fit for our project. They're looking for that simple, that empathetic. They're looking for the imperfect. And, and, I, and so I think that's the perfect parallel for this, for this profession uh, where most of the people in the audience are from. Yeah. Mm. I would, uh, I'd agree. I think that again, I'll go back to that. Um, to, you know, something I said before that we, we buy from people, we don't buy from companies yeah. and it's the experiences that we have with another person that leaves us uh, either wanting more or, uh, or, or forgetting that experience and, and, and looking for something else. And so um, we have the ability to leave them with an imperfect moment of being ourself and saying, how can I create something, a situation where I am me and I'm going to be that vulnerable, uh, creative, uh, open and uh, uh, designed alliance with this other person and create something that's also going to coach them into something that might be visionary into like what this could be. And in that we can create something bigger and better together. Um, but we're going to do it together. We're going to co-create this thing and, uh, and it's going to have simplicity and empathy and imperfection as we do it together. And that's the kind of world that we should be in to get uh, it when we're, when we're trying to create these things. And if we could do that, um, you're going to win but more often with other people than trying to come in with slick um, stuff all the time and trying to win people over with non-human perfect and complex and the opposite of everything that we just talked about. I, I think that is a really important point. Um, next week, we're going to head towards... Um, some of the some of the things that we're going to talk about are imposter syndrome, perfectionism, things like that. And I think, and we touch on these every once in a while, but I think this idea of, hey, we've got to make it slick. We've got to make it perfect um, in such an imperfect world. And I mean, obviously, everybody in the audience knows how messy the, a process design is, right? So how can we possibly try to put on the hat of perfection, right? 
Uh, I don't think anybody actually expects that. Yeah. Um, do you, do you believe that perfection exists? No, I don't know. Yeah. I don't think it does. I, I don't think that perfection is a, is a, is a, um, is a myth. And, mm -hmm. um, and so if we're always striving, for, if you, if you go through, just open up Instagram and, and swipe through and look at, um, you know, pre-staged photos and then look at the ones that stand out to you that of, of the photos that of people that, that are just, um, of someone that's just, you know, shot like a family that just took a funny photo of themselves in the moment. And it just, it's, it's just hilarious. And that's the one that you go, okay, I'll follow that one. That's that, or I like that one. That's funny. Or you'll comment on it because it's just so imperfectly funny uh, versus everything else. And that's, that is what connects you to uh, them. It's when you try so hard to like, hold the camera. You see this all the time on the streets or they hold the camera perfectly. And, you know, you're just walking around and just looking for the right light and it's the perfect shot. And you go on, you know, that that's the same kind of thing that we're talking about in business when it's just overly buttoned up. Um, it's just, it, it doesn't, it doesn't resonate as loud, um, or as, as, um, as it doesn't connect as much as you want it to. Uh, I, and I find it interesting too, you know, we're, we're talking about, we talk about this a lot in terms of our business with our customer or our business with our client or whatever we call that person that we serve, right? But I think, especially after the last 12 months, right, that we've been through, everything's shutting down and people working from home and doing school from home and all of that stuff. I think the other side of this too is our communication with our team. E even if you're a, um, a sole practitioner, you, you still have probably consultants that you're working with and, and other team members, other people that are involved in a project. So how do we, how do we flip this around a little bit? I mean, it's just, it's really, it's just changing perspective. We've moved the camera around a little bit. So how does the same conversation apply from employee to employer or leader to staff or, you know, whatever that context is. How do we, how are we more human in that context? Yeah. Well, everybody shares in different ways. Mm. Every human being is a different, and I, I go through this in the, my shareology book and I um, worked with um, the New York, New York times uh, research group to, um, um, and they put out then a, a report on this and then I built it into an algorithm that actually broke down six different categories of how people, how humans share. Uh, so when you're expecting every human to share in the same way, you're actually expecting too much of them because you're, uh, maybe putting one person who you might consider to be, uh, the same as the next person you're over, you're over, um, uh, uh, you're over committing, um, them, um, in, in what you th might think like, Oh, I'll just jump on a zoom call and we'll just talk it through when, when really they'd rather be on audio, um, or they, they'd rather email or they'd rather do, uh, maybe go out for a walk and be on so like, everybody has their own way of, of, of even just being on social media. If you were to break it down on social media and how they'd rather show up, they, they this applies to that that way of sharing too, or how, how humans just want to share generally in the world. Um, we all have, this applies all, across all types, all sizes, all things, everything in the world, this breaks down to that. And so the six categories, um, I can go over it if you want, um, is, uh, yeah. Okay. So the, the six categories are the altruist. Um, in fact, if actually, if you want to go, um, to a page that I have, it, you can take a, a little quiz and it will tell you in 30 seconds, which one you are. Um, oh, I've had, um, it's at Brian Kramer, Brian with a Y Kramer, the K.com forward slash personal brand quiz. Um, all one word. Um, and I, and I'll tell you what it is. So if you don't want to take it, that's fine too. I can, uh, I've had 40,000 people take it and, and, uh, it's, it's a, it's a really fun thing to do. Um, no sales. It's not a sales thing. It's just, just fun to, fun to see. So, um, the first one's the altruist. The altruist is a heart sharer. They like to share from their heart all the time. You you'll see a lot of people like this. 
Um, I'd love if in the comments you say, wow, that's me. I'm a heart sharer. Um, definitely would love to hear that. And if you took the quiz, then tell us exactly what you are, because it'll tell you on the last page uh, exactly what you are. The What's second... It? I'm sorry, so it's it's forward slash what? Um, personal brand quiz, all one word. BrianKramer.com uh, forward slash personal brand quiz. I just added it cap as a uh, caption. You can oh, pop okay. it up there. I was just going to go take the quiz. Am I not? Am I not do that? <laughs> <laughs> That's it. So, you got it. There you go. So again, if you're uh, since you're listening, uh, as Brian goes through this, he just he just explained the altruist, the heart share. Um, as he goes through these, if this resonates with you, say, Hey, that's me. Put that in the comments. Yep. Uh, if that resonates with you and, or you take the quiz and you know, for sure, uh, then you can also pop that back in as well. Um, and so then the next one is an early adopter. An early adopter is somebody who likes to learn things really quickly, really fast, right when they come out. So maybe you're the first person who buys the Apple phone right when it comes out. And then you like to turn around and you like to share it with people or teach people things right when it comes out. Um, so you're an educator. Early, early adopters are educators. Um, then the next person is a connector. A connector is somebody who likes to connect two or more people together. So the people that are here on are probably connectors, um, most likely, but not all the time. Uh, connectors are, are like, hey, I know you. I know that person. I really want you guys to meet. That would be a, And they just live in that joy all the time. Uh, another person is the careerist. A careerist loves to uh, loves to um, uh, write. They like to put out information into the world. They like to research. They like to uh, learn. Those are those are the people that they um, uh, uh, and then they like to share that kind of information. They share all their learnings out into the world. The next one is a boomerang. The boomerang is really fascinating. The boomerang will um, will take information in uh, and then ask a question out. You see these people as community. Uh, moderators. Community moderators love to ask questions only to turn around and ask more questions. Now, um, you might also see them as uh, a second piece of who a moderator, uh, a boomerang might be as a troll. A troll would actually also uh, fit into a second version of a boomerang where they like to ask questions so that they can turn around and, and troll you. But we'll stay with the lighter side of the boomerang. Yeah. Um, so it, you can be two different things there. The the last one is a selective. There's a little bit of a selective in us all. You'll probably all think, well, I'm selective. That's me a little bit. And a selective is somebody who likes to actually, um, um, who likes to uh, message behind the scenes. They're a little more what you might call introverted. Uh, I'll message or I'll text message or I'll email them. I don't really want to be public with what I say. I'd rather be private with what I say. Um, and so they they tend to just like me be voyeurs or observers of things. And so maybe there's people watching right now that aren't aren't actually typing. Um, uh, there's about I think the stat that I looked at last was. 77% of people in a, in a feed, like a Facebook feed are just observing. They're not actually typing. Um, and then, uh, and, and quite frankly, those are the people that actually we, uh, we, we want, uh, in, in all businesses to actually, um, uh, uh, um, uh, learn from because they have the most voice when they do speak up, they have the most voice because they never do speak up. So if they do speak up, we're like, Oh my God, they just spoke up. We want, uh, they, they have the most uh, power with their words because they never do speak up. And there's all kinds of research I could put behind that and, and share with everyone. We just don't have time, but the selectives are the most powerful of the entire bunch because when they do speak, it's like, wow, that must be true they never speak up. So, um, so those are the six and those six are, are to answer your question, um, how you approach this kind of work of, of how everyone is working right now across the last year, but also in, um, in the, in the totality of how we are as humans at home, at work, 
in life. Um, it's how we share. It's how we approach everything. And so when you start to, when you go to ask somebody to do something, really think about like, am I asking them from the perspective of how I work or am I asking them from the perspective of how they work? Mm -hmm. Uh, that's an interesting point. Um, the other thing that I would say too is keep keep commenting. You know, as as you kind of process what Brian's been saying, keep commenting and you know posting your comment about which one you think you are. And even if you're watching this on the replay version, you can play along at home uh, as you're watching the replay. You know, you put hashtag replay and then which one you are so that we can continue this conversation uh, even beyond our time here right now. Uh, I know Catherine's got some uh, questions she's going to pop up, but I want selfishly, I want to ask one more thing. Um, is there any way for us? So is there any way for Jeff to understand or predict what Brian is or what Catherine is? How do we, how do we figure out um, what the other person is? Well, um, become first and foremost, just become a little more intimate with what these each mean. Um, yeah. uh, that's a given. Um, number two is uh, you can, once you're intimate with it, it's like anything else. It's like the Enneagram, if you're familiar with that or, or um, you know, any of the personality uh, types that are out there. There's a lot of different personality, different um, um, uh, uh, types that you can go out and learn from. This one is about sharing. So when you look at someone and, and start to get to know them, it's like mm -hmm. peeling the onion, right? Like as you peel the onion layer with somebody, uh, you get to know their communication style. So, it, um, so I went through very quickly what this is um, for each person. But if you go to this page that I just showed you, um, there's a paragraph uh, on that page under Brian, un, under that link there. That paragraph describes what each one is and just start to understand that um, a little bit more um, intimately. And, and as you peel that layer with a person, you'll see, do they get to, do they like to learn things more quickly and turn around and teach people? Well, that's an early adopter. They lean towards that mo most. Um, now, um, so they're probably going to be that more often than, than not. Um, now, does this mean that everybody is just one thing and not the others? No. Uh, this, we are a little bit of all these things. I get that question all the time. And, and m maybe one day you're a careerist and the next day you're a boomerang. Um, but this just means that you lean toward this more times than not. Um, we're all a little selective, uh, at, at night we're tired. We're probably all selective. Um, so we're, we're going to dip into each of these. It's just where you lean toward more times than Got not. It. And so you'll, you'll want to just, um, uh, spot that as you peel the onion layer with each person and know these definitions. Got it. Got it. And so those of you that are listening to this in the podcast version, and you can't see this on the screen, that website uh, where you can take the personal brand quiz is briancramer.com. So that's, again, that's Brian with a Y and Kramer with a K. And it's uh, so briancramer.com slash personal brand quiz, all one word. So uh, go check that out and uh, take the quiz. Learn what you are and learn how to understand what other people are. Uh, Catherine, I know I interrupted a question that was coming. So what, what do we have for a question? Hmm. Well, it happens to be my question. Am I allowed to put mine up there first? But I, I feel <laughs> okay. Well, I'm doing it because um, so my my question, which I think it will help answer the following question, which is not mine, is um, when does being a human, like being human, when does that cross the line to being unprofessional? Because, you know, as I listen to the, that's what I wonder, like what's too human? How, how much being human is too human for a professional setting? That's an interesting question. So um, it's, it's like uh, what I equate that to is when, what's, what does it mean to, uh, what's an overshare? <laughs> like, what if I share too much? Like, um, uh, it's, it, that's kind of what I take away from what you're asking. Mm. Um, because if I'm too human, am I too vulnerable or am I too, um, am I too much for somebody? Am I too much for them to handle? 
Um, did I overshare what I thought? Am I walking away with a vulnerability hangover because of what I just did? And, um, and so then what I, what I tend to ask back is, um, is, um, you know, what is my sab and, and this is where I get a little bit more coachy, um, and, and less, um, less businessy, um, is, is where's my, where's, um, where's the saboteur showing up in that? Um, and why, what, when, when, when we, when we say why, um, um, uh, when I shared too much of myself or when I shared a lot of what, um, showed up in that moment, which might've crossed a line to being unprofessional, um, was, was that something that I made up in my head or was that something that that actually happened and and um, they made up in in uh, in their head? Or do I need to clear that with the other person? Um, and so clear it. Uh, a <laughs> walk over to the other person and clear it. Um, uh, that's a hard. Dis- that's what I call a, or what everybody calls a hard hard conversation to have. But clear it. How did that resonate with you? You know um, what what did that mean? What did that make? Most of the time we made it up in our head. Um, and, and that's, that's what I find. So um, that's number one. Number two is when we did make it up in our head, uh, where did that saboteur show up to tell us that we were being unprofessional or we shared too much? Um, uh, I find that when we, when we think we shared too much, we actually were being uh, our best selves or we were being our best humans. And that, that means that we were being a little uh, more of ourselves and we just pushed the line a little bit too much. So I'm going to take what you just asked and actually reverse it and say, um, good for you. Um, you just pushed the envelope a little bit more. You weren't being unprofessional. You were actually pushing yourself to go a little more open and a little more vulnerable in, in most cases. Now, I'm not talking to the people that maybe have a chip on their shoulder or they're a little, I won't use bad words here, but you know, they're just absolutely like, undeserving or they're asking for it. The, I'm not talking about that category of people. I'm just saying like most of the time you're not out to get people. You're just, you're sharing and being vulnerable and human in the moment. So I think that that's most of the time in, that's our saboteur saying, um, you know, you're, you're not good enough. You're not going to, you're not being enough. You're not creating enough and you are, you're good enough. You are creating enough and you, you need to keep doing more. Okay, so that Jeff, is it okay if I ask another? Yeah, question? let's b- before before we go to that one. Let's. There's one on the screen right now about oversharing. F- oversharing can force an unwelcome level of closeness or faux intimacy. How do I recognize the line? So, um, where where is the line out there? You'll know it when you shared too much. <laughs> you'll know it when you see it <laughs> that's the best way i can say it you when you when you uh shared too much but um here's the thing um um i don't i don't think that there's a uh there's there's an overshare if you're being you i just don't i just don't think there is um and uh now do you want to be cognizant of uh, what you guys talked about earlier in the week with emotional um, intelligence? Yeah. Um, do you want to understand who's around you when you're talking and speaking to make sure you're aware of your surroundings? Absolutely. Um, is there a right time and place for what you're saying? Absolutely. Um, so as long as you're cognizant of those things, then I don't think that there is an overshare. I think that, th- that as long as you have those things in check, then, um, then being you and speaking from a place of, um, uh, uh, you know, channeling what, what's coming to you. Uh, most of the time, if you're channeling what's coming to you, it's, it's the perfect thing to say. Um, but we don't. We're, we're just saying what, what is... Um, what's what's in our head we're not speaking about what's in our heart or in our chest or in our wherever that comes from and so um you know stop speaking from your head and start speaking from your heart um practice that like just practice like saying what is inside of you and then there's never a line i don't i don't see that ever happening with any of my clients um and just practice that with people around you speak from your heart and i don't see a line ever 
does that um, that 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 takes a certain level? Well, a big level of vulner- vulnerability, right, and and honesty to to be able to get to that point. I think. Uh, how so? Tell me more. Well, I think. <sighs> I think so, so some of the, some of the people in the audience right now work on uh, residential architecture. And so they're working with families, perhaps some might be working on um, let's see, say a university building. So they're meeting with the university president or something like that. So, you know, back back to your point about emotional intelligence, I've got to be able to read the room, basically, yeah. right? I've got to be able to understand. And then, you know, when you're talking about speaking from your heart, hmm, okay, if I'm with the university president, I've read the room, right? I've I've got I've got to I've got to sort of set set the put the put the bumpers in the uh, in the uh, uh, sides of the bowling alley there, but. Um, speaking from my heart instead of from my head, what I, maybe what I think that university president wants to hear instead of what I really think, um, you know, how do I, how do I judge that? How do I balance that? You know, I'm thinking, okay, what he, what he or she really wants me to say is this, but what I think is this. So where's that line of professionalism versus speaking from the heart and how, how do I, how do I parse all that out? Yeah. Well, I'm going to call you on a bunch of things that just went through your head. Um, First of all, um, and I do this lovingly, that uh, that wasn't the president speaking. That was your saboteur that just happened out loud. Um, And you just shared with us your own saboteur that just gave you all kinds of reasons that you are not going to say the right things. Um, and so, um, so what you, what, what we just witnessed was exactly the thing that we're all doing to ourselves. Um, what if I don't say the right things because the president mm-hmm. won't think I will say the right things? What if I don't say the right things? Cause I'm not, um, going to, cause I'm not reading the room right, or I'm not doing this. And so by the time we get up there, we've already talked ourselves out of doing the exact same thing of speaking from our heart that we're going to do. So now we're putting ourselves in the, and in this state of uh, stress. And so now we're not going to say the right things. Um, by the time we get up there, we should be putting ourselves into the state of, I'm just going to say what I think is needed to be said. And that's either going to be good enough or it's not going to be good enough. And either I'm Gaylord Fokker walking out of here, burning up a building or a roof, or I'm going to walk out of here uh, being carried off the field on top of everyone's shoulders. But either way, they're going to love me because I'm Gaylord Fokker and everyone loves Gaylord Fokker because he's kind and sensitive and loving. And we all love that dude for who he is. Or... Uh, I said some really brilliant shit and I channeled it and everybody loves me. So either way, it's a win. Yeah. And for those of you that are not catching the reference, just Google it's F O C K E R. I did. I did not say the other word. And by the way, no, I'm, no, I'm, I'm in love with that guy. Cause uh, 20 years ago, I saw that movie with my then girlfriend, now wife, 20, over 20 years ago is way longer than that. We saw the movie. Um, this is, uh, aging us, but, uh, or dating us, but, um, and we, I wasn't laughing at the movie. I was like watching it. And then we walked out of the theater and she was gut laughing. And she's like, why were you laughing at that? And I'm like, cause a lot of that stuff happened to me. And she's like, are you serious? And she goes, if you, if, if we are ever going to get married, you have to learn to laugh at yourself. And from that day forward, she called me uh Gaylord Fokker. That became my nickname. And so I'm like, you know what? We have to learn to laugh at ourselves more. And that, that became like my thing. So now all my friends call me Fokker. Well, so anyway. I'm, I'm glad that she taught you that. And that the, the film is meet the parents, right? So yep. The, meet yep. the parents. And okay. then there's a um, meet the Fockers and yeah. That's right. right. Great films. Yeah. And Ben Stiller yeah. <clears throat> was played by Ben Stiller, right? So he's always yeah. funny. Right. Oh, he's yeah. so good. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to have to watch that. I, I never saw the parents, I don't think. Oh, it was a while ago, you, so maybe I've forgotten. You have homework. <laughs> there you I, go. I love homework, so yeah, that's great. <laughs> um, hmm, so I always speak from the heart. Yeah. But, but hmm, you have to know when it's your heart and when it's your another. Anyway, but someone did point out that the university president is human too. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. 
How much I'm courage sure. does it take? Is is that a speaking from the heart? Is is that a courage thing, or is it again just putting the saboteur aside, or is it the same thing? Well, um, I'll tell you this: I um, I I still get um, I've spoken on over. Uh, I don't know how many stages, two, 200 plus stages. And I still get uh, uh, scared, uh, nervous every stage. Well, this year, not too many stages, but uh, I still get nervous every stage I get onto. Before we hopped on here, I, I still get nervous. Um, it's just a thing. And I think it's a good thing because that means we care. Um, and so that hopefully that never goes away for any of us. Um, if it does something, something's not right. Um, the other thing I, I'll follow that with is I got, uh, to, as you mentioned in the very beginning, when you introed me, I um, gave a TED talk and that was the hardest one I, I've ever done mm. um, because they, um, uh, you go through the whole, this whole process and you get invited in, you get invited to submit, a, uh, wow. to, to, uh, to, um, uh, submit, uh, uh, an application and then your application has to be accepted. And then you do a video interview and then you do the, the submit your ideas and you have more than one idea, but I submitted one because I believed in it. And it was this, this whole idea that was this thing that ended up, um, really, uh, I, I believe Well, anyway, you can go watch it. I won't like do the whole story behind it, but, um, the whole thing ended up at like 300 hours of, practicing with a coach at the, at the, at the Ted, um, corporate. And, um, and they ended up, um, having me then for three months go through this whole rigorous thing. I had to, uh, memorize it front, front, front to back, mm -hmm. mid, mid to front to back to, I mean, every word. And I'm a heart speaker, as you can tell. So for me to do a script was just like, so out of alignment. Then by the time I got to the, um, I got to the, um, uh, day before at the stage, I got into the uh, little mini place where they mini stage where they had 12 people sitting there and they were interviewing me and, and saying, okay, now go ahead and do your whole TED talk just before tomorrow, before everybody shows up on the red dot and all this stuff. I looked at her. She's this British lady who has worked with Oprah and Steven Spielberg. And she's just like, she's the heart. She was the, a, a really good coach, but in case she watches this back, she was, she was also the most challenging person I ever had worked with for good reason. She put me through the rigors. Oh my God. Never learned more from her than from, I learned more from her than anybody else, but ha had me so built up to this moment. And I looked at her and I couldn't remember a word. Oh. I, I lost it. I lost the whole thing. I lost every inch of everything. I just lost it. And I was, I was just about to burst into tears. Uh, and my wife leans over and she says, he's a heart speaker and you've just scripted him so much and built it up, built it up, built it up. And then she stands up and she just releases me by tearing my whole script up into a thousand pieces. And she wow. said that. And then she says, I don't care what you say, just, just speak. And, and, um, when she did that, it just released me and I went broke right into the whole, um, into the whole thing. And I, and I spoke it and, and it was just this release that happened. So to, I mean, it's long story short, it, it, it's a, it's a, it's a permission that we give ourselves. Um, That's amazing. that we, that we can, we just, we just give it, uh, whether it's from someone else or ourself, we can give this to ourselves from just inside. And it, it, I didn't start the speech actually from the script. I just started from whatever was happening in my head and then it just fell into place and I just started talking and it just felt so, so right. And it felt so good. And then the next day I, I, I gave the talk of my, or what felt to me like the talk of my life. And so it's the permission we give ourselves and just stand up and just you be you and you do you, you, you give yourself that permission. I love that. I love that. Got a question there, Catherine. You're muted. Okay. Okay, I'm back. How can we be vulnerable and get our client to match our vulnerability? I mean, I guess that the longer part of that question might be, how is it not going to end up being like a one-sided from the heart situation? How do we get the client there too? 
Um, well, just because you shared your vulnerability doesn't mean the other person has to share theirs. Um, yeah. That's not that that shouldn't be an expectation. It's like, okay, now it's your turn. What do you got? Um, that's uh, <laughs> that would be very awkward. <laughs> that <laughs> here, uh, I'll pass the microphone over. Um, that's not that's not what I would expect. I think, um, and I'm joking around. I know that wasn't the intent behind the question, but um, the the way that um, the there's three levels of listening that we we all met, that we usually do one out of three. Um, and the reason that we only do one out of three and we never make it to the really the third one, um, sometimes to the second one. And when we don't practice these levels of listening, we don't ever get um, to the level of vulnerability. It's not that we share vulnerability. It's the level of listening that we have with other people that doesn't uncover vulnerability. And it, it's not even just vulnerability. It's a connection with others. It's a deeper connection with someone else. And the connection that we have with other people is centered around powerful questions and listening, not just vulnerability. We think it's vulnerability because vulnerability is uh, the latest, hottest trend b behind uh, Brene Brown. And I'm not saying that vulnerability is not a great thing. It really is. I mean, I, I'm, I'm totally behind it, but it's not the only thing. Um, if you want to have deeper, uh, deeper connection with other humans, try just deeper levels of listening. Um, try deeper levels of um, of really understanding, and so to do that, then look at this. Um, look at the levels. So the level one is um, not what we're doing here. So level one is you're listening to someone else, and you're thinking about something, and the other person's thinking about something else. Now they, um, my. Uh, my dad knows this, but he was, he's a physician and he would always be thinking about his day because somebody was uh, potentially passing away and he was trying to take care of them. And he, he had things going on in his head all the time. I don't know how he managed it, but he was always trying to think, listen to what I was saying. And I could tell he wasn't listening to what I was saying, but he could regurgitate back to me what I was saying, even though he wasn't totally listening to me. Mm -hmm. I think on some level, humans can do that. And somehow we're listening, but we're not listening. And you can tell the, the person who's speaking can tell the other person really isn't listening, even though they can hold a conversation. That's yeah. not listening. And you can tell. So if you catch yourself doing that, try not to do that. Uh, practice that. Tr truly practice that. Number two, and that's, I'm not talking to you guys. I'm speaking through you to the audience. Um, right now, though. I'm trying to really listen now. See, I locked you in, didn't I? Yeah, so you did. Number two, now I'm like, you guys are like, oh my God, the guilt. Um, <laughs> number two is um, number two is you're listening, but you're thinking about what you're going to say next. Mm -hmm. So again, you're not really listening because you're cognizant about what's, oh my gosh, what's the follow-up question I need to say to this, which gets you into this mode of um, what what is it that... Um, uh, I, oh my gosh, he just said something and I've got to say something. Otherwise we're going to have a gap. I'm not going to say something smart or I'm not going to have something to say. So then we're going to have the worst thing ever, like radio silence, right? So then the third one is the ultimate. It's like what we all want and need in life, which is I'm listening and I trust that when I need to speak, I'll have something to say, but I'm locked directly in on what the other person's saying, no matter what. Now, if we all did this in the world at level three, can you imagine what kind of world we would have um, and how we would all be? Now, I guarantee you, if you practice that level three with your clients, and I'm going to add one more three thing into the mix. You weren't just asking questions. You're asking powerful questions. Yeah. There's a difference between that. Questions are, how are you doing? And then not actually, re, uh, and when you say, how are you doing? And you don't really care about how you're doing. And there's a question, there's a difference between how are you doing? And, um, and what, what was one thing that really made your week great this week? Mm. And then moving into level three. Can you imagine what that deepened relationship would be like when you are there for every conversation with a powerful question and a level three with every client that you had? <sighs> Just try it. There's a term that you used in there. 
you, you said trusting that it's trusting that you're going to know what to say next, or you're going to have something to say next. And yeah. I, I think what you just described and a lot of our audiences heard me say this before. I, I talk about empathy a lot. And I think what you just described, really, if we could get there, and we don't want to always put it in terms of competition, but the architect that can do that all the time with their clients, they win. Because if, if your job as an architect is to make the other person's life better, your client's life better, you can't lose if you're level three, like you're talking about there. That's, that's a, that's an awesome, awesome way to wrap up this conversation. Brian, I really appreciate this time with you. I know you've got to, uh, to run off and get prepared for something else, but this was, this was fantastic. I really appreciate it. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And I appreciate it as well. And this was, uh, really, really fun. And your audience, I've been watching the conversation and it's so rewarding and wonderful to see people that, um, that are connecting in and caring and, um, and just a wonderful group of people. So thank you all, everyone for being here and for doing this and, and, uh, yeah, appreciate it. Great. Thank you. And so to the audience out there, we're going to let Brian go now because he needs to go prepare for uh, something he's got coming up. So uh, I'm going to drop him back into the green room and then we will stick around for a few minutes to wrap this up. So Brian, again, thank you. And um, we'll talk soon. Sounds good. Thank you, everybody. And thank you, guys. Thanks, Brian. All right. All right, everybody. (laughs) Um, else that's out there, um, time to, time to wrap this up thoughts, questions, um, anything to follow up on, uh, for those of you that are listening in the podcast version, if you ever have thoughts or, or questions, um, you can always leave those, um, as a comment, of course, on the, uh, on the podcast. But another thing that you can do is you can DM us on Instagram, the uh, Context and Clarity Instagram account is context underscore clarity. So if you have uh, comments on a uh, uh, on one of these uh, live sessions and you're listening to it in the podcast form, you can go over to Instagram, context underscore clarity, and DM us there. Um, all right, everybody. What say you? Any any final thoughts? Any Anything to wrap up here? Uh, <clears throat> well, see, I didn't, I didn't decide what I was going to say while you were talking. So now I. <laughs> That's all right. You've got to, I you've got to trust that it will come to you. I, so I, um, I'm looking at a Facebook comment. It just says Facebook user. So I apologize. I don't know the name, but it says, I'm trying to wrap my head around the third level listening and, um, uh, while Jay. I'm half listening. So there's, there's some tongue in cheek there, but. Yeah, that was Jay. There's Jay. Yeah. It, how powerful an idea is that, right? That we're going to, not only are we going to ask questions, we're going to ask powerful questions, and then we are going to, um, and then we're going to truly sit back and listen and engage. Uh, one of the things that popped into my head as Brian was was speaking was, um, you know, part of this is really the idea of being present, right? I'm, I'm, I am present in this conversation right now. Right. I love that. Yeah. I mean, it seems like you ask a powerful question and then you just have to wait for the answer instead of filling the void with more, less powerful questions. If someone's not answering right away. That's a good point. That's a good point. It's, there's something that pops up when, um, um, many of you know that I'm a, a huge fan of, of, uh, Chris Doe at the future and, and Blair ends when he's, you know, pricing creativity and win without pitching manifesto. Um, I, I don't remember exactly how Blair ends puts the term, but it's, it's basically embracing the silence, right? You ask a question and you put it out there and you don't, as hard as that can be, that's, that's hard for me, right? I'm going to ask a question and I'm going to let you sit and stew in it, let it marinate, 
I, I am not going to fill the void. I'm going to, I'm going to give that, I'm going to leave that space there until you fill it right. Until you give an answer. And I, I think, I, I think the level of connection is just, it just goes deeper and deeper when we do that. <clears throat> right. And then Jay says that practicing that would change the world, not just the business world. That's a good point. It's a really good point. Yeah. Yeah. That, that popped into my head too, as Brian was saying that it's like, yes, how many times uh, I don't want to make this a political discussion, but how many times in politics, right? Someone asks a question and all they're doing is, is setting up for their talking point or their sound bite. They don't even care what, what the response to their point is they're, They just want to set it up. Yeah. It would, it would change the world. It would. It would. Well, that was very interesting. It was. Yeah. It was. A reminder to everybody, um, tomorrow we will go back. We'll be back to our, our normal daily context and clarity conversations, 4 p.m. Eastern inside the Entree Architect Community Facebook group. The um, The topic for tomorrow, we, we've been revisiting this mini series on digital and social media platforms. Um, I'm leaving it pretty broad tomorrow. And we didn't get to this in the conversation with Brian. I thought, you know, it was, we were going in a really good direction. So I didn't want to divert it, but Brian talks about, and these are my words. These aren't his words. He talks about how to, how to be a three dimensional person on, on, uh, uh, on social media, he talks about the rule of thirds. And I'll get into that more tomorrow, but I thought that really sets up a great conversation on what we should post on social media. So it'll be platform agnostic. What should we post on That's social a new media? Word. That's the word of 2021, Jeff. Platform agnostic. <laughs> there you go. Pulled that wow. one out All for right. you. Was, was just and then how to be a three-dimensional person. I was just listening to him talk about that, but where was that? Was that on a... Um, it's probably on a podcast, yeah. He talks about the rule of thirds. Yeah, it was yeah. That pretty... Yeah, about how the rule of thirds leads to a better photograph and the same thing with the mm -hmm. kind of the image you're giving off to the world that if you do these three different angle type things and people won't yeah. think of one dimensional. It's too bad. I just can't remember exactly what he said. That's all right. I can repeat it tomorrow. <laughs> I'll, re I'll remember it. Um, so we'll talk about that tomorrow. And then for those of you that um, maybe this is new or you only see us on Thursdays, our special guest next week, Catherine and I will be back to host another conversation with another special guest next week. And our guest will be Debbie Millman, who is the, um, she's the creator and the long time, all time host of the longest running design podcast. It's called Design Matters. Um, incredible podcast, incredible woman. Um, when I, when I write the introduction for her, I'm going to struggle to keep it at just a few sentences because she's prolific. She's amazing. Um, I, for one, when I turn on her podcast, the first thing that hits me is I love her voice. She's kind of amazing broadcast voice, but also, um, if you're not familiar, she, she has, um, uh, I think the number is like over 400 different people that she's interviewed on design matters. But the thing that impresses me about every one of the episodes is that she is so well prepared and she digs so deeply into the, into the humanity of the person sitting across the table from her that um, I actually heard, I was listening to the interview, her interview, um, David Byrne, Talking Heads and, and otherwise. And she asked David a question and he said, how did that get out there? So she, she, had, she had researched and studied and gone so deep that she asked a question that just amazed him that, that she had even found that background on him. So she comes so well prepared. Um, I'm really looking forward to this conversation with Debbie Millman next week. So make sure if, if 
Thursday's Context and Clarity Live is the only uh, version of Context and Clarity that you catch. Catch us next Thursday for this conversation with Debbie Millman. And um, also a reminder that Context and Clarity is, of course, a live stream, but it is also a podcast that comes out at 12.01 Eastern every morning. It's a very short form, five to seven minutes or so every morning. You can find that wherever uh, you consume podcasts. And Context and Clarity is also on Clubhouse, on the Clubhouse app. If you're there, that's where the pre-party starts. Uh, we have our coffee conversation at 9 a.m. Eastern. Um, look for the CNC, the 30-minute CNC coffee talks in the Context and Clarity Club. It's a good way uh, to start. Topic. It is. I, I enjoy it. I'm going to get one of your mugs, Jeff. I decided <laughs> I would do that. <laughs> the, the, my uh, my my mug well, has become a thing of lore. I think, and they could be a sponsor, maybe if we don't mention it for free. Like later, they could be a sponsor of this show. Yeah, yeah. Let's see who who have we uh, who have we lobbied for sponsorship today? Um, Amazon. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think maybe they're out now. I'm not sure. <laughs> they, they, they might be out, but um, not Chick Fil A. I didn't say nice things about Chick Fil A, so they're also out. I guess I guess we ruined that one too. Um, Ember. Ember Mugs, if you're out there, you are the unofficial sponsor. Love to make you an official sponsor <laughs> of uh, Context and Clarity because during the coffee talks, you are the host of my mm-hmm. coffee. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm soon, soon to be mine. I don't have the the mug is is uh, upstairs in the cabinet. It's not in the studio at the moment. I can't show I can't it. <laughs> I'll I'll try to remember that next time. We'll we'll plug Ember until they uh until they break yeah. down and sponsor us. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, this, the context and clarity in the morning is a fun way to start the day. So it is. It is. I, I enjoy I enjoy that format because it's um you know, for the and, and Catherine Catherine has a solo podcast of her own. Um and well, so I do. You do, and I think for people like Catherine and myself and other people that are that are podcasters, and sometimes we host these live streams and things, it's it's kind of an odd world that um, I often kind of take measure of where I am because I spend I spend so much time basically staring at myself on the screen, right, and talking to myself while I'm talking to you, uh, you the audience, and I I think. That's one of the reasons I love the clubhouse conversation so much is because it's real time and it's real voice and every everybody can weigh in with their voice. So I, I, mm. I enjoy that. I enjoy that platform. Yeah. I forget that other people aren't in a room together. I feel like everybody else is in a room and I'm just listening. But then I forget everybody's actually yeah. – there is no space that is really clubhouse or, you Correct. know, think about that too much. It's a little – it's a lot – well, that, that's a that's a mind bending topic for the future. <laughs> where is Clubhouse? <laughs> well, where where is the Matrix? <laughs> All right. Well, with that, I think we're going to wrap this up right here. I thank every single one of you for c- coming along on this ride with us. I thought it was a great conversation today. A lot to think about, a lot to process. Um, so the great thing is we, um, because of the technology that we use here, because of the platforms that we use, these conversations stick around. So if you're in the Entree Architect Community Facebook group, as soon as we hit stop here, Facebook will do its magic and, and it'll be a recorded uh, version of this in Facebook. If you're seeing this on LinkedIn right now, LinkedIn will do its magic and it'll stay here on LinkedIn. Same with the Entree Architect YouTube channel. And and uh, perhaps if we ever get that setting right on Twitch, it'll, it'll happen on Twitch as well. But um, I'd encourage you to go back and watch it again, listen again, comment more. If you're seeing this, in the replay version, use the hashtag replay and uh, say, hey, I'm listening. Let us know. Let us know where you are. Give us your questions. Give us your comments. The great thing about this is it can continue. It can extend this conversation um, 
further into the future. So, uh, so think about that. Think about about uh, processing it some more. Maybe asking some more questions, making some more comments, and um, and continuing the conversation. Join me tomorrow live, four p.m. Eastern, same bat time, same bat channel, inside the Entree Architect Facebook group community, Facebook group, and. Um, until then, Catherine, thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Thanks for letting me be on the show because it's it's fun. This is your show too. You are uh, uh, so those of you that don't know Catherine really really does keep this on the rail. So I appreciate that, and I thank all of you that are out there um, for everything. Thanks for making this a thing, and all of your questions and comments. And uh, we'll see you again soon. Take care of yourself. Take care of those around you. Be well and be safe and uh, take a little bit of time to breathe tonight. Come back again tomorrow, rejuvenated and ready to do it again. Thanks, everybody. See you tomorrow.